Uh, this is Dr. Singh uh, from Barnes Jewish Hospital in uh, St. Louis. What we are going to do today is a multi-vessel case, a uh, 69-year-old female who presented to us uh, from an outside hospital where she presented with a typical angina and she had a cardiac catheterization at that institution where they described a 60% lesion in the proximal LAD, uh, a high-grade lesion in the mid-circumflex obtuse marginal bifurcation, and an eccentric, uh, probably 70% lesion in the right coronary artery. She was offered coronary artery bypass grafting, but the patient was hesitant about that, and her stress test had showed some apical and uh, large infralateral ischemia. So two-vessel disease on a stress test and angiogram showed three-vessel disease. So. so what we will do is, this is a very complex lesion involving both the branches. So what, is, what we will do is a technique uh, called the jail balloon technique, which we have written up and it got accepted to the TCT this year, is where we jail a balloon in the side branch, deploy the stent in the main branch, angioplasty the side branch, remove the balloon and wire, and then post dilate. So that way, we do not completely jail any vessel. And we haven't had any uh, occlusions of the side branches with these techniques. So we're deploying the stent in the main branch with that balloon jailed into the side branch. So we're deploying the stent at 10 atmospheres, then we'll inflate the jail balloon to open up the side branch, and then we'll remove the jail balloon and wire. We will remove this balloon up to here. Then uh, what we will do is pull this wire back slightly, and I will leave, in, because of this angle, I will leave this wire jailed in place before we post dilate. So we'll go up to 12 atmospheres, deploy the stent again, uh, re-expand the stent. Bifurcations are at high risk for thrombosis, and uh, it is um, very, very important for us to make sure the stent is completely, stent stress are completely uh, expanded and opposed. Distally looks good, Distally, and that's the stent. So the distal edge looks nice, the stent, uh, Looks pretty good. Vessel is very big. Yeah, that's recording. So the vessel is grossly, stent is grossly undersized for this vessel. Expanded though, but undersized. And you can see it's floating. Proximally, it's floating. Good. So that's the proximal edge of the stent, which is grossly underexpanded. So what we'll do is we'll post dilate. And this is the purpose of IVUS. If we did not do IVUS in this area, we would leave the stent and the stent would thrombose. Most likely because it's a bifurcation with poor runoffs. So uh, that's why we usually do bifurcations, uh, bifurcations with intravascular ultrasound. So what we'll do is because the vessel is 3.5 to 4.0, you oh, don't want to overexpand the stent, so we'll take a 3.5. 15 atmospheres, which we think should be enough, but what we will do is uh, just make sure it's opposed. So we'll do a quick IVUS, and if that's good, then we are done. Go ahead and uh, record, please. So the stent is still underexpanded in that area. What we'll do is we'll make it a little bigger, but proximally, you see our balloon has actually expanded it pretty well and the proximal stent is completely expanded. So that's actually very, very good. What we'll do is distal vessel is small, so what we'll do is put a 3.0 balloon in the middle and we'll post dilate it. Okay. So well, it looks pretty good. I think uh, we are pretty close to done in this area. What we'll do is we'll pull the jail wire now, see if we can pull it or no. And this is a moment of truth. <laughs> but it, it, comes it comes out like butter, so it's actually pretty good. And it's a beautiful result of a bifurcation. You cannot do anything better than that, and both branches are 100% now widely patent. So I think we're good in the second flex, and we're good in the LAD, so we have done a complete revascularization of the left system under FFR and IVUS guidance. FFR-guided therapy, left anterior descending artery was not significant, did not need a bypass operation. We left that alone, FFR 0.89. Fixed the so complex bifurcation of the circumflexed. FFR, the right, which was significant, we fixed that also. Post-FFR was 0.91, 0 
which is an excellent result as suggested by Ives at the same time. So uh, it's a complete revascularization as opposed to surgery, and we can be sure of the events down the road that uh, our TLR rate in the left anterior descending artery is 1% or less, and um, the drug eluding stents are well opposed, well expanded, and the stent area is greater than 5.5 at both sides. So we can feel pretty confident about our future TLR rate. Stent thrombosis in these cases are uh, multifactorial. So we've done our part. We just need patient compliance, and I think we can feel really good about a procedure like this.